And Elena Kaufman will lead them off in the women's uh, 6K standing. Catherine Berg and Anna Milanina from Krasnodarsk. So Russia one and two in the start of the competition. Momoko Dekajima will be uh, later in the start list. They go off at uh, 30 second intervals. And the athletes in the LW8 and LW6 categories uh, have impairments uh, in one arm. Generally using one ski pole. And we have a factoring system applying in uh, these biathlon and cross country events so that athletes with different classifications can compete together and have their times adjusted by the factoring system that takes into account their level of impairment. And over the years it's uh, been proved to work uh, very successfully in alpine, cross country and biathlon events. So we look forward to a close competition here and Elena Kaufman is getting ready for a start. A 26-year-old from Russia leads us away in the women's 6K. So the skating freestyle uh, form of skiing is what's adopted here in uh, the biathlon events. And if you're new to the sport, the athlete's not required to um, carry the rifle around with them. It waits for them at the shooting range. Anna Malanina next to go from Krasnodarsk. And uh, she's 27 years of age. And a gold medalist in biathlon uh, from Vancouver in the pursuit. So she'll be looking for more glory here. World Championship gold medalist. And in cross country as well. Alexandra Kononova. Also had uh, great success in uh, cross-country skiing in, in Vancouver with uh, two goals. And also in uh, the biathlon in the 12.5k standing goal there as well. So she's taken three gold medals away from Vancouver. Shoko Ota of Japan from Tokyo. Bronze medalist in Torino in uh, biathlon. So we've got checkpoints around the course to keep us informed about uh, how the athletes are going in comparative terms. Maya Javela of Finland. Anxious to get started. She's uh, just turned 30, Yavala. Silver medalist in the pursuit in Vancouver was Yavala. Athletes out on the course, Kaufman and Milanina. They're both on the same factoring of 97%, so uh, their times against each other. No adjustments to be made compared to each other as Irina Bui of uh, Ukraine Heads out. The first six athletes in the field, all LW8s. 97% factor applying to them. Ota making good progress around the course. We'll check her progress at uh, the 500 meter mark. That purple marker on the right hand side of your screen there. And she's come through an adjusted time behind Kanonova by some 14 seconds. So she's got uh, work to do. Ota, if she's to keep pace 
with the first couple to go out but to Russia expecting to have a good day in this event Julia Batenkova from Ukraine getting towards the middle of the field now 14 in all so around seven minutes between the first and last uh, athletes to go out hear how soft the snow is now as we get to the middle of the day it was uh, reasonably crusty and firm earlier on but uh, now Natalia Bratyuk from the Russian Federation of Ukraine just uh, 15 seconds outside Kononova's time with Mila Lyashenko Ukraine well represented in this race with four competitors Dekajima Another 15 seconds down on Kanonova. So Kanonova's time through that first checkpoint, pretty good. It's holding up well. Larissa Varona of Belarus. And she picked up a, a silver medal in the relay. And a couple of bronze medals in Vancouver in cross country. No medals yet uh, in uh, biathlon for Verona. But here we go with Kaufman, the first athlete out, first visit to the range. The rifle is obviously there waiting for her. Target 10 metres away. 1.5 centimetres in diameter, and she's five out of five, Kaufman. Great start. Ideal. Just what you need. It's uh, such a boost physically and mentally to knock over those first five targets. It just allows you to really attack the, the next two-thirds of the race, knowing you haven't made a mistake. Melanina. Oh, and there's a miss there. The crowd was right into those first four shots, giving them each of a cheer, but she's uh, got a penalty loop to do now. Tanonova. Oh, a miss. And a second. Kanonova who skied so quickly around that first lap, but uh, she's imposed a penalty on herself of around 300 metres. Real drama unfolds at the range. The, the whole complexion of a race can change in, in 20 seconds, depending on how accurate uh, the athletes shoot. Navalia of Italy out on the course. She went out uh, fairly late in the field, the third last of the 14. 20 seconds down on Kanonova's time through there, but remember Kanonova's just had a problem or two with the rifle. Now, Ota. It's Elena Kaufman of the Russian Federation who's got the best time leaving the range for the first time. So Ota getting herself settled. Nice rhythm she's got going with the right for here. Four out of four. And five out of five for Ota. And she too can really attack this next section of the race. Yavla, top of screen from Finland. We set out uh, 30 seconds after Ota. And she is five from five as well. Ota, 37 seconds down on Kaufman's time. Kaufman will take some catching unless uh, she has a miss or two 
for the second visit to the range. Yarvel at 26 seconds down and for the moment in second position. Splitting the Russians, Kaufman and Milena. Here in Abui. Four miss. Four out of five. Certainly can't afford any more misses if she's to figure on the podium. Momoko Dekajima. Miss for her. Four out of five. Well, such is the form and pace of uh, Kaufman that these skiers who are missing one at the first stop absolutely cannot afford any more misses if they're to challenge the current leader. Anna Kaufman. Patenkova. Misses with a third. And squeezes off the last one accurately. She's got a loop to do, and she's already well behind the leading time. Now on the course, watching Maya Yavala make her way. It's one of the not-so-steep inclines around the course, and she's 40 seconds down on Kaufman, though. Lyashenko. First stop at the range for her. All good for Lyashenko. And she'll be uh, one of the top three to leave the range. They've got a few metres to ski, so it'll be close between Lyashenko and Bratyuk with that checkpoint out of the range for the first time. But half a minute down on Kaufman. What a pace. Verona. Marissa Verona has also represented Belarus in rowing. At the World Championships uh, just three years ago. Not happy with that one miss, though. Shake of the head from Verona. Wants five out of five. Expects perfection. Especially at this first stop where they're relatively fresh. Now, Elena Kaufman. She's all confidence and pace. One more accurate shot. Took a time with it wisely because now she can really attack these uh, last couple of Ks and go after the top spot on the podium. Elena Kaufman is going to be very hard to beat now. Kaufman, 56 years of age. break during the 2010-2011 season. And the first child, uh, Karina. Milanina, Kaufman's teammate. Hearts pounding, chest heaving, got to get the job done calmly, accurately. Milanina is doing that. Oh, she's missed one, as she did at the first stop. So four out of five again, and Milanina isn't going to challenge Kaufman with that kind of a penalty. 
And they're on the same factoring of 97%. So Kaufman won't be troubled by Milanina. Not today. Not in this race. And Karen Bisson of Canada. From Gatineau. First up miss took a long time to get set and there's a second miss and she's struggling. Much better. But it's a little slow and there are two misses already for Bisson. But she's recovered well to get the next three. And back out onto the course she goes. A degree in history and politics from the University of Ottawa. And a journalism degree from Napier University. Studied in France and Spain. So she's a bit of an academic as well as an athlete. Second shoot for Ota. Oh, she's really got a steady hand. Well done, Shoko Ota. So I've got uh, the men's event underway. With the 7.5k standing for the men. As that Karachurin of Russia is gone. Next to go, Mark Arends of Canada. Men's uh, categories L3 up to L8. The times factored accordingly, depending on their impairment. Elena up almost a minute down on Kaufman's time. Third of the men to go will be Niels Erik Ulset of Norway. Bigger field for the men, 19 competitors. Kanonova coming through the four and a half k's a minute ten down on Kaufman I can't see who can get to uh, Kaufman at the moment she's uh, shot and skied so well Repchuk uh, from Ukraine is off in the men's events with a good pace good rhythm nice aggressive start from him Dekajima into the range for the second time and she missed one for the first stop. Ah, that's better. Dekajima, that'll lift her up the rankings a little. And the coach will be pleased with that effort. And Dekajima looks like she's almost caught uh, Batenkova. now he missed one the first stop and miss there you see she's outside Kaufman's time four out of five that's another penalty loop coming her way Kirill Mikhailov Russian Federation. Russia with seven athletes in the men's seven and a half K. The snow just carving up now. It's so soft. A 
Lichinski has checked his 500 meter time as against Arends of uh, Canada who went out second. Got some athletes starting to finish now in the women's 6K and it's Alina Kaufman coming around into the home straight and the crowd is sensing this could be a victory here. She went out first. She hasn't missed a target and she's driving it to the line. She's flagging a little. But this could be a winning effort from Alina Kaufman. And Kaufman comes to the line in 18 minutes 27. That will take some beating. Mikhailov out on the course. Seven and a half K. Couple of seconds down on the time of uh, Mark Arendt of Canada. The Kompsiev of the Russian Federation. Vladislav Lekontsev. Been given uh, a rousing cheer as he uh, makes his way out of the stadium. Milanina. Skied a very good uh, last leg. And he's coming to the line. 30 seconds outside Kaufman's. Well, that seems like a big margin, but it might still be good enough for second. Benjamin Davier of France, is the new leader through the early checkpoints in the men's event, just shading our ends of Canada. Chisato is the uh, sole Japanese competitor in the men's 7.5k. Kanonova. <laughs> Alexandra Kanonova of Ukraine. Driving it to the finish. In front of a very appreciative and large crowd at Lauda. And into third place she skis, Kanonova. So they're one, two, three as they went out at the moment. Kaufman, Milena, and Kanonova. Shoko Ota of Japan went out, uh, shot well, but not be quick enough. Vitali Sitink. to go for the men. Sitnik uh, pushing for all he's worth with that uh, left stock. In comes Ota now in fourth position. So still they're keeping this progression. <laughs> One, two, three, four, they went out. One, two, three, four are their times. And Yavila has upset that. Into third place she goes. A minute down on Kauf Kaufman's time. She's pushed Kanonova off the podium. Nikas Kurtz of Austria. Next to go in the men's 7.5k. Anxious to get it started. And he's away. Decidedly calm as he left the gate. But, uh, some serious pushing going on now. Skating or freestyle technique is the one in the biathlon. And the range is a busy spot. Kaczynski. Five out of five. And Wyszynski is uh, looking to beat the time of Karachurin, who was the first to go out, the Russian. And Wyszynski's, uh, well, less than a second behind him. So a good race there in prospect. 
This is uh, Karachurin. Seven. He doesn't have to use uh, stocks. But Tenkova is in the third position. Dekajima coming into the stadium, but she's well down on Kaufman's time, as you can see. She's a couple of minutes down. So. It won't be a podium finish uh, for Momoko Dekajima. Missed the target with a first stop at the range. But even if you take 25, 30 seconds off, she's still not up to the pace today with her factored time. But the Momoko Dekajima finishing as strongly as she can. A couple of minutes down on Kaufman. So it's looking very good for Russia at the moment. They're holding on to one and two with Kaufman and Malenina. Alexander Pronkov of Russia comes into the range. Rifles there waiting for him. Katachurin out of the range the first time in six minutes and two. But Pronkov, oh, that hurts. Missed the first shot. three can't afford any more misses here four out of five is okay but it's not as good as others and Irina Bui has finished Yushchenko into seventh place Yaramchuk of Russia is uh, 25 seconds down at that 3K checkpoint. The men's 7.5K involves three loops of 2.5 kilometers and two stops at the range. And this is the first visit for Kodlezarov. He's got a miss there, but four out of five, Kodlezarov. attack that penalty loop uh, as quickly as he can A test of your pace and turning ability Mikhailov 42 seconds down on uh, Wolfschinski so Grigory Wolfschinski is really uh, set quite a benchmark Aichi Sato into the range. Just a little bit of movement on that flag, suggesting the breeze has to be at least considered. And Sato does well. He's more than half a minute down on Karachurin's time. So off he goes. Ichi Sato and uh, Pronkov. Through the three Ks. 30 seconds down on the Komptsev. Oh, good shooting. He had a really relaxed uh, look about him as he attacked those first five shots. Uh, Sitnik, and Ukrainian sets off. Not a particularly quick time around the course. 
35 seconds down. Karachurin. Second stop at the range and he misses his first. That opens the field up a little. And four out of five for Karachurin. Having shot clear the first stop. But uh, there's only 18. So uh, Karachurin might have a mighty future in front of him as a as a Paralympian and by athlete. Already able to hold his head up in this company. But Tuke has come in and uh, so has Wyszynski. Now Wyszynski he shoots clear here. I don't want to put the commentator's curse on him. Perhaps I have. He misses. If you look at the times there, he was uh, certainly on a par with Karachurin, but he's incurred a penalty loop. So that's going to put him well down. Now the Norwegian Ulset. Here's Eric Ulset. 10 out of 10. No penalties for the Norwegian. And he won't be far off Karachurin's time. We've got to get to the checkpoint. So what is he? 10 down on Karachurin. He'll need a quick last uh, two and a half Ks. Yaramchuk. Can he challenge his Russian teammate Karachurin? One penalty from the first shoot. But none from the second. And Alexander Yaramchuk, he's got to be a chance here. He'll be less than half a minute behind uh, Karachurin with two and a half uh, kilometres to ski. 16 seconds down. Abe It's <laughs> uh, Yurika Abe He's uh, finished the women's race Karachurin Next to the range Got uh, Len Kromtsev, another of uh, this strong Russian contingent coming in for his next shoot. Didn't miss first time, and he's got 45 seconds here to try and catch uh, Karachurin's time exiting the second shoot. But he must be five out of five, and he's not. He's missed his second. Four out of five, though, and if he's brisk about his work in the penalty loop, he could still feature on the podium. Vladislav Lekomtsev, wouldn't he like to take back that one miss? Benjamin Davier. Oh, he's annoyed he's made that one miss, too. Could have really been uh, up there. With a clean shoot, second time. And this is where the story is so often told. But Lazarov, he's got uh, no time to spare here. He's got to be fast and straight. Oh, a little too hasty, perhaps. And a penalty loop for Kodlozarov. One by one, they're uh, playing themselves out of it. 
Penalty loop, you can see uh, the bottom half of the screen must seem a long way around sometimes. So after the second shoot, Oskar Turin and Lekmatsev will sit to the Norway. And those uh, second and third skiers within 10 seconds of the leader. Islands of Canada and Wovshinsky also well placed to make a challenge. This is uh, Sato again. Shot clear the first time. He's 10 out of 10, Sato. From Nagoya in Japan. Couldn't medal uh, in Vancouver. He had a 12th and a 14th placing in the pursuit. And 12 and a half K event. And uh, Bissan of Canada finishing off the women's race in 14th position. 8.47 down on our leader Kaufman. Alina Kaufman looks like the medal of the gold variety might be hers. Sitnik of Ukraine. Needs a clean shoot here. He impressed us with his first uh, effort. Mark Ahrens of Canada coming down to the line to finish his race. And he's got the time to beat at the moment. 19.14 from Canmore. Alberta. <laughs> this Canadian uh, female teammate there. And this one. And Karachurin is coming down to the finish line. And with a, an adjusted time. Factoring in his impairment, it looks like he's going to uh, be just outside our ends. He's got 15 seconds to make it to the finish line and he's giving it all he's worth. He's driving down as hard as he can. And the crowd is riding with him. Karachurin. Seven seconds, six, five. Can he get there and tip out Arendt? I don't think he will quite. Oh, he's missed it by half a second. Half a second. Oh, you just hope that's not the, the story at the end of the day. Perhaps it will be. Wawshinski is next to come in. And he's outside the top two. Uh, to, into third temporarily he skis but uh, Raptuk is well down almost a minute behind Arendt of Canada this would be something of an upset if Mark Arendt could uh, tip out the Russians uh, from top position here but some quick times coming in Yaramchuk of Russia Looks like he'll uh, slide into third for the moment. Ulset, fourth, 14 seconds down on Arendt. And finishing in a rush. This field of 19 in the men's event. And Mikhailov into third. and Karachurin second and third at the moment behind Arendt Harkonnen 
Went out second last, Juha Hakkinen of Finland. And although he shot clear with his first visit, you can see he's a couple of minutes down on the corresponding time of Karachurin. So Hakkinen, just not a fast enough skier to challenge the top boys today, and he's just missed one, so not too much good happening for Hakkinen. With four out of five, respectable, and nine out of ten overall at the range. Now Lekontsev. Well, he's got almost 20 seconds uh, to get to the line and steal top's place. Vladislav Lekontsev. Lekontsev looking for a podium finish here. Lekontsev. And the crowd is right with him. They know what he's got to do. He's got to get there in five seconds. Lekontsev, he's absolutely spent and he's got there. Lekontsev by 0.7 of a second. Vladislav Lekontsev. Is he the man? Can anyone else out on the course still beat him? You just never know. He hasn't got time to look up at the big screen. He's just got to finish as hard as he can, and that he did. And he's just pushed Mark Adams of Canada off top spots. Benjamin Davier of France coming in. Almost 19 seconds down on Lekontsev's time. Oh, what an exciting moment there, provided by Vladislav Lekontsev. Threw himself at the line. It seemed the clock would beat him, but he had one last effort. Bronkov outside uh, a podium finish. Finishing as best he can nonetheless. Looking for a top 10 finish and he'll get that. He'll push Rep Tuk out of 10th. Vital Skupian of Poland. And three misses. His first shoot. He's got a miss there too, unfortunately. A modified uh, firing system that he is able to use. So that's a so bad little session there of the rifle. Vital Skipian. Nakichi Sato coming down to the line. And went out 12th and he is 12th at the moment. 142 down on Nakamsev. Colors leave you no doubt they've given it absolutely everything. They can push themselves to the point of exhaustion and seemingly beyond it. They're seriously spent when they finish. Things are looking pretty rosy for Vladislav Lekontsev. He's got a 0.7 of a second margin over. Uh, Mark Arendt of Canada and then it's uh, Azat Karachurin in third. So we've got skiers out on the course. Grey skies above us, a mild day, it's quite warm but uh, thankfully no rain. We don't want any more of this uh, wonderful uh, Sochi snow disappearing on us. Sitnik 
one turn to make and then the home straight. And Vitaly Sitnik will have finished his race. I think from the uh, Tatkiv region. He's finished out of the medals uh, in biathlon in Vancouver. A couple of eight placings. Sushanka of Belarus comes in a couple of minutes down. of Ukraine looks like he'll be next uh, to finish not had the best of days he, I think, uh, he's, he's had uh, four misses at the range so there's uh, 600 extra metres he's had to ski that's why he's drifted down the rankings a little he's set off in 13th uh, position on the interval start about his 15th across the line with that adjusted time. So just not his best day, Miss Drinker. But he's only 19, so we uh, cut him some slack and allow him time to improve and mature as a competitor. Michael Kurtz of Austria. Finish line in sight for him. 120 down on uh, Lekomtsev. He's looking good for the top spot now. Can't believe the finish though. 0.7 of a second between Lekomtsev and Arendt. And then another 0.5 between Arendt and Karachurin. That's how tight it can be. And with these interval starts, you just don't know how close you might be to the person in front or behind you. You've really got to give it everything, even if you can't see them. And Lekomtsev, there it is, 0 0.7 back to Arendt. And then a further half a second between Arendt and Karachurin. So Russia, 1, 3, 4 and 5. <laughs> Out of the course, you're looking a bit old, uh, Skupian. his way through the five and a half K checkpoint uh, at the moment. Last uh, right hand uh, turn into the home straight from Rahi in Finland. His uncle uh, Kari Harkonnen is a cross country skiing gold medalist. So often the sport is in the family, and that's the case with Juha. Swedes, Russians all with uh, great pedigree in these Nordic events, cross country and biathlon. And certainly being given the platform to showcase uh, that experience and expertise here. Um, Bermejo of the United States coming in. Got some support here from our Bermejo, who was uh, born in Guadalajara. And he's been given a good reception. Line. 
lovely sporting philosophy he expressed about uh, one small crack doesn't mean you are broken. It means that you were put to the test and you didn't fall apart. A great sentiment from Omar Bumejo. Crowd having a, a terrific day at the Laura Biathlon and Cross Country Centre. They just love it when they see themselves on the big screen. Yes, there you are. Give us a wave. That's it. That's how the game's played. <laughs> Brazil. Yeah, even that flag is here. Even though there are no competitors in this one. Doesn't matter. Brazil's got a couple of big sporting festivals coming their way. World Cup, Olympics. And, uh, their ability to host a big event will be tested in the months and years to come. If they do it like Sochi's done, then they'll do it well. Tremendous mood, I think, established around these games, and the volunteers have played a significant part in that. And it's, uh, it's been my privilege to work on both the Olympics and the Paralympics, and uh, I could not fault the volunteers here. They've been absolutely wonderful, helpful, cheerful, help set the mood for, for good games and a great time. What do they say? A smile costs nothing, but it gives much. And we've seen that a million times over from the volunteers in Sochi. Waiting for the last uh, couple of competitors to come in. And then we'll have completion for the men's 7.5K standing. But, uh, as it stands, we've got Vladislav Lekontsev, Mark Arendt, and Azat Karachurin. Russia, Canada, Russia. One, two, and three. Interesting that Karachurin and Arendt might find themselves on the podium because they went out first and second. Karachurin was looking the man to catch for a good while and then Lekomtsev just found enough in that last lap to bring it home. He started in the middle of the field number 10 bib out of 19 competitors and the Russian fans are delighted that he found it when he needed it the thing about the concept is that uh, he's, uh, he's not yet 20 so Vladislav Lekomtsev is going to be something country world champion in a couple of events. This is best result in biathlon though. I'm assuming it stands up and we can confidently say it will. Coming down to the line is uh, Witold Skupian. Didn't do quite so well with the rifle today but uh, he's finishing uh, with some energy and good speed across the line from Skupian. In 2501.6. And that should be the field. Very exciting race this one. With Lekomtsev throwing himself at the line to get the victory. sort of come in close to the athlete on that low level you see how soft uh, the snow looks it's quite granulated almost sandy looking but it's the same for everyone and we had the same kinds of conditions in other races that uh, just make the adjustment and hope that the waxing technicians have got it right 
Result for the women's, Alina Kaufman and Anna Milena have made it a 1-2 for the Russian Federation from Yulia Batenkova of Ukraine. Maya Yavala was next. Rika Abe in 13th. Karen Bisson of Canada rounding out the 14 competitors in the women's 6K standing. Confirming the results for the men, Vladislav Lekomtsev of the Russian Federation narrowly ahead of uh, Canada's Mark Arendt and uh, Russia's Azat Karachurin. Russia four of the top five places. Full set of Norway there, WA of France. Russia also ninth and tenth. They've had a good day in the men's 7.5k standing. Targets missed by Maestrenko. That'll always push you down the field. A little break or two in the cloud cover above us, making sure that uh, we're not going to have any interruptions uh, in the way of severe weather. Quite a sort of flat light over the arena.
women's 6K and men's 7.5K for visually impaired uh, athletes. Not far away. Eight athletes in the women's event. Air temperature, oh, it's a very mild uh, 10 degrees. Humidity, pretty acceptable, 42%. A little bit of a wind uh, just starting to puff up now, around six kilometres uh, per hour. Athletes uh, compete uh, with a guide in uh, this next event. So, Michaela Lisova, Yulia Budalieva, Elena Rimazova. So, Russia strongly represented once more. Ukraine have a couple in it Shishkova and Pilutska. And each of the competitors with their respective guide, Alexei Ivanov for Lisova, who may start favourite here, Budalieva, also a strong chance, we've got Tatiana Maltseva. The men's event, and Russia, with the four on that front page there, Palukin really expected uh, to take this event unless something goes wrong, and uh, Artemov also starting there in uh, the 13 bib, hoping that that's not an unlucky one today. A couple of US athletes there, Kevin Burton. But, uh, still lots of Russian support here. But they're very fair to all the competitors. They're uh, warmly greeting everyone who competes today. And that's what it's all about. Galina Lisova, Russian Federation is set to go. And she works uh, consistently with Alexei Ivanov, who's been her guide for, for a good time now. They both have to do the work. And the guide, of course, indicates uh, verbally what's ahead on the course and how the athlete needs to take uh, left and right turns. Yulia Budlieva with Tatiana Maltseva as her guide. And away they go. It's a real team effort in the events for athletes with visual impairment. Going off at uh, 30 second intervals. Tell you more about uh, what happens at the shooting range when they get there. Russia 1 2 3 in the starting gate to, start, uh, to kick us off here. Elena Remazova with guard Natalia Yakimova. From Tumen in the Russian Federation. Is over 27 years of age. Out on the course, though, looking at Nikolina uh, Lisova. Setting off uh, Oksana Shishkova from Ukraine. Assisted today by Lara Nestorenko. Coming up uh, to the 500 metre checkpoint, 
11 seconds down on the time of Lisa. Vivian Hirsch of Germany, sole representative from uh, that country in this event. We've also got Canada, Belarus, and Ukraine, along with Russia. Margarita Gorbanova was born in St. Petersburg, but uh, representing Canada. Ermazova is just eight seconds down on that 500 meter mark uh, time of Lisova. Prelutska next to go. Olga from Kiev. The coach is confident uh, that. Uh, Olga Prelutska is really just uh, starting to come into her best years as a, a biathlete. And had a fall there for Prelutska. Whoops. And uh, you see, the snow is, is really quite challenging. These conditions are very soft. Um, to see if Prelutska is able to continue. She may not be able to. She could have suffered an injury there. That would be a great shame. Watching uh, the progress of Vivian Hirsch. And uh, keeping in step with her guide, uh, Norman Schlee. 20 seconds down on Lucifer's time through that 500 uh, meter mark. And this is great, uh, great disappointment for Prilutska. She's obviously heartbroken. She might have got a ski stuck in a track here, and it's very easy to do in this soft snow. She's trying to turn, and it won't. And she, the balance is tipped backwards. Kubanova coming through 30 seconds down on the time of Lisova. Lisova is really the hot favourite here. Kubanova. The guide is uh, Andrea Bunden. Enormous commitment the guides make to assist their athlete and obviously the time very good friend now she's got a knee injury as well here so that's uh it's terrible news for prelutska yadiva got a bataya from belarus coming through that checkpoint as well so athletes with a visual impairment they use a computerized acoustic rifle system it allows the athlete to adjust the rifle aim according to the sound frequency they're hearing through their headset and she's got five out of five Lisa. so as, as the athletes aim the rifle towards the target the frequency of the sound increases so there's a very elevated pitch when the aim is correct That's a, a computerized electronic kind of rifle uh, arrangement that allows uh, the athletes with a visual impairment to be involved in biathlon. So on goes the headset now for uh, Budialeva. Two misses there, unfortunately, for Budalieva. It doesn't actually help when the crowd reacts because uh, the less noise, the better for the athletes with visual impairment when they are at the range so that they can most clearly hear the change in frequency so they know when they're on target. But hopefully at home you're able to hear a change in frequency.
We add a five for Remazova. And Shishkova reads it well. So Oksana Shishkova of Ukraine. Shishkova into second place as they leave the range for the first time. Shishkova's guide, uh, Lara Nesterenko. with the field reduced by one with the injury very early on to Olga Prilutska and I, I'd be prepared to say it was uh, the snow conditions that that tricked her because the the ruts when the snow is soft see uh, a misunderstanding about the shooting lane to go to there but we've now got uh, Vivian Hirsch in down to Hirsch it's, a, it's an intriguing and really interesting process to watch if uh, you've not observed this uh, before the way athletes with visual impairment are able to go to the range and use these computerized rifles and the sound frequency system uh, it's, a, it's an excellent adaptation to get uh, these athletes involved in biathlon so Hirsch shoots five out of five. And again in sync with her guide Norman Schlee. See how soft the snow is and it's, it's no wonder really that Polutska had a fall. More surprising is that there perhaps hasn't been more tumbles. At least of her. her time is holding up well. Remazova a minute 40 down on Lisova. Again, with uh, the visually impaired uh, category, the, the factoring system is in place. There are three uh, classifications of visual impairment, B1, 2, and 3. So Lisova, out of the first shoot in 5.54. It's got a half second lead over Shishkova of Ukraine. And then Skorobatai, Skora Bahataya, uh, 55 seconds down from Belarus, Hirsch of Germany. Next to 103, almost 104 behind uh, Lisova. Lisova, who's leading this race at the moment, a double bronze medalist from Vancouver in, uh, in biathlon but in cross country skiing Lisova already has a, um, a gold medal from Rila and two silver medals it's, uh, biathlon where she's really seeking to uh, add uh, some, some gold to the cupboard Hirsch just looking over the shoulder to see who's coming Lisa but second shoot now <laughs> uh, 
Well, the crowd naturally excited. <laughs> Probably do her a favor if they kept quiet when she's shooting. But uh, she comes up smiling. And you don't want to go celebrating too early, but uh, it's a smile of satisfaction with what she's done so far that's entirely understandable for Mikalina Liseva because she sets out for the final uh, couple of Ks knowing that she's uh, 10 out of 10 at the range and she's got a good lead. And the crowd's excited for her and I think she's more than a little excited for herself for what this might mean. And she's only uh, 21. Quite, uh, quite a figure in, uh, in Russian sport uh, for what she's been achieving. Gorbanova. Just making steady progress around the course. She doesn't look like she's going to challenge for the, for the podium today. to their Buddha Lieva, Julia Buddha Lieva. So Buddha Lieva needs uh, a better effort at the range here. She's got it. So two penalties first time, none the second. She's uh, adjusted nicely. Little over. So heads out. Finish the race with one more lap of two kilometres. And really sitting off at a uh, good pace. Put the over in the B2 category, a 98% uh, percent Factoring applied to her time. Shishkova. Chitwala also. So Shishkova collects the stocks. And then the way she goes, but they're well down on Lisa this time. I'm reading a little bit about uh, Michalina Lisa. And the race leader was often teased at school as her sight deteriorated and she wore thicker and thicker glasses. But, uh, she's found a way to express herself uh, most assertively and that's at, uh, in Paralympic sport. And 44, we're watching uh, Shishkova out on the course. Her guide, Lada Nestorenko. crowd very much enjoying the, the combination the teamwork between guide and athlete and it's over back in fourth position well down on our leader Lisa Lieva coming through the four and a half K checkpoint so still Got a good amount to ski. This is a six kilometer event. First of the events for women's visually impaired athletes. And through she comes, a minute nine down on Lisova. He's got both disciplines of this uh, tough biathlon under control. Belarus. No penalties, first time in. Last to start with this uh, interval start.
Three out of five only, unfortunately. The RBS, so she's got a couple of uh, healthy loops to do. quickest uh, skier but she's very accurate and uh, that's 10 out of 10 uh, for Vivian Hirsch and her uh, guide Norman Schlee will try and lead her around for one last lap as quick as they can manage to see if they can uh, perhaps finish on the podium there close to that inside the fourth time of Renazova a minute 40 down on Lisova Leave uh, Gorbanova for the moment because into the stadium and along the home straight uh, comes Lisova. Mikalina Lisova is set to finish. It'll be uh, in around 20 minutes or under, close to an even under great duress. I think she's managing a smile because this looks like it could be a winning effort for Lisova. Comes across just past the 20 minute mark. 20 minutes and three seconds. And Lisa, well, it's one thing to be a hot favourite for an event. It is another to deliver. And it looks like the liver she has. Again, Hirsch. To the next checkpoint at 4.5k. She's uh, 147 down on Lisa. It's difficult to imagine that Lisa's time is going to be beaten today. Lieva is giving it a good try. Lieva coming in with Guy Tatiana Maltseva. Lieva coming in for the moment at least with the second best time. 28 and a half seconds behind Lieva. That could well hold up for second place too. The way she's uh, tackled uh, the course. Shishkova of Ukraine. Maybe a chance. trust that the athletes put in their guides and the combination between the two is, uh, is really something to watch. Rim is over. She's got to make a right hand turn into the home straight. Rim is over. Outside the time of Gudelieva. So one, two, three will be one, two, three for the moment. As one is over, comes down to the line in a bit over 21 minutes. Shishkova. 
is uh, pushing away to the line for all she's worth because uh, third place is on offer here and for the moment she's grabbed it Oksana Shishkova so it's Russia Russia Ukraine and that might be how they finish too we've still got Hirsch Gorbanova and Skoda Bahataya out on the course but uh, they are not likely to challenge the top three times now. They're missing Olga Kulutska, a very unfortunate Ukrainian, uh, was out very early on in the race after a bad fall. And I don't think the soft snow helps in contributing. What I mean to say is I think the snow was, was partly to blame. During Olympic competition, we saw quite a lot of cross-country and biathlon uh, athletes uh, get a ski stuck in a, in a soft rut. She's got this technique absolutely nailed to Magdalena Lisova. At the range, she's able to find that high frequency and thus the accuracy needed more quickly than any of the other athletes it seems and out on the course she and guide Alexei Ivanov are pretty quick so as it stands we've got the Nikolina Lisova of the Russian Federation also Yulia Budalieva and then third from Ukraine Oksana Shishkova and that should be the order next to come in will be Vivian Hirsch and guide Norman Schlee Vivian shot very well She's from Freiburg in Germany. And uh, she's not yet uh, 23. And she holds up as a sporting hero, uh, the great uh, former German tennis player Boris Becker. achievement and happiness that she's accomplished something while being active and the opportunity to show that despite an impairment everything is possible and that's always the focus of these games not, not what they can't do but what they can do and right now we've got a good battle on here as uh, Hirsch trying to hold off uh, Skora Bataya Great finish between the two, but Hirsch is uh, just going to get there first. To come across in fifth position. Uh, that uh, relegates uh, Yadiva Skolabataya. The sixth. And there's always something at stake. It might not be a podium finisher, but uh, if someone's breathing down your neck, it can always add a little speed to the skis. Vivian Hirsch. And it just managed to hold off uh, Yadidas Karabatai. Still uh, one athlete uh, out on the course, and it's uh, Margarita Gorbanova. We're watching. Uh, 
Margarita the range before as she uh, comes into view now. Tell a little bit about the fabulous sort of performances of her family. Her mother, Olga Nazarenko, won gold and silver medals in para Nordic skiing at the 1992 Paralympic Winter Games in Alberville. Her father, Mikhail Gordmanov, gold and silver medals at the European Championships. Father taught her to ski at the age of seven in St. Petersburg. She did st stop skiing for a few years when she was living in Toronto. But began training and competing again in 2005. And here she is. In her second uh, Paralympic Winter Games. Gorbanova getting a generous hand as she uh, comes down to the line. Formerly from Russia, a lot of the fans in the crowd would be aware of that. And Gorbanova finishes the event in seventh spot. Andrea Bundan. Well, that's an know she's done a great job. Did she? She's absolutely spent. The, uh, the top athletes make it look like it's somehow easy, and that was the impression we got from Mikalina Lisova today, who's uh, won this event by almost 30 seconds. Placings for you in the visually impaired 6K. It was uh, Nikolina Lisova from Yulia Kudyaleva and uh, Oksana Shishkova. Russia, Russia and Ukraine. One, two and three. An injury to Prelutska very early on in the race, unfortunately for her. of his uh, victory has uh, put smiles on some faces in the crowd but I think uh, no matter who won we would have had a good time here the crowd's been well entertained well informed and they've uh, returned that with some uh, really appreciative uh, applause for all the athletes Men's event uh, not far away, the men's 7.5k biathlon for the visually impaired category. Eighteen starters, so a significantly larger field. Russia, Ukraine, Sweden, Germany, Belarus, Canada, France, USA, Kazakhstan, all represented in the men's event. Paralympic biathletes are allowed to use any 
prototype of air or CO2 rifle of conventional appearance with a five-shot clip and in accordance with specifications of the International Union of Shootings, UIT, rule. For blind class by athletes, rifles will be equipped with electroacoustic glasses, optronic system. Blind athletes are shooting with an electronic rifle that allows beating by hearing. The closer the rifle points to the center of the target, the higher the tone is. The different tones that occur when the rifle is moved allows the shooter to find the exact center of the target. Some athletes with a physical disability compete from a sitting position using a sit ski, also called a mono ski. As the name suggests, mono skis have a specially fitted chair over a single ski. The chair includes seat belts and other strap. Stay with us, not far well away from the start in the men's seven and a half kilometer visually impaired uh, biathlon event. To minimize the impact of impairments on sport performance and to ensure the success of an athlete is determined okay. by skill, Russian favorite to Nikolai Perukin. I think this is crowd will carry him to a win. Through classification, it is determined which athletes are eligible to compete in a sport and how athletes are grouped together for competition. Classification is sport specific because an impairment affects the ability to perform in different sports to a different extent. As a consequence, an athlete may meet the criteria in one sport but may not meet the criteria in another sport. Skiers in biathlon compete in several different sport classes depending on the activity limitation that their impairment causes.
Men's 7.5k biathlon. Athletes with a visual impairment. Field of uh, 18 with their guides. <laughs> Away goes Nikolai Palukin. Led off by his guide Andre Tokarov and uh, a lot of expectation around this fine. Russian athlete, perhaps he can win this race. He's gone uh, very close at uh, an Olympic level before. Second in the pursuit, second in the 12.5k in Vancouver. Stanislav Chokleev and guide Maxim Pitagov follow out uh, Palukin. But 24 years of age, from Kilmen in Russia. A couple of podium finishes at last year's World Championships. Now, 19 year old Sebastian Modin, Frozo in Sweden. And he's, uh, unbelievably. Already at his uh, second Olympic Winter Games. He was only 15 when he competed in Vancouver. Checking the time through 500 metres for Palukin. 117.8 he was. Lukyanenko of Ukraine. Athletes going off at 30 second intervals. All 18 competitors using a guide in this event. Vikinenko, 35 years of age from Kharkiv. Kovalevsky from Ukraine, from Kiev. And his guide is Alexander Mushin. First Olympics, uh, Paralympics, excuse me, for Kavalevsky. Just 23. Vladimir Vygotkov. He's 26 years of age from Podolsk. Ruslan Bogachev is his guide. Kinenko just two seconds down on Chokleev. Chokleev has got the quickest time through that checkpoint. So Chokleev quicker than Palukin. Yuri Utkin. He's got Vitaly Kazakov from Ukraine. Very close to the guard there, was uh, Utkin. <laughs> kiss for the, uh, the charm there, that's important obviously, to uh, Oleg Konomorov and Andrei Romanov is the guide for Oleg. medalist at the World Championships last year. Looking at the group 12. To the 500 metre checkpoint. Come seven seconds down on Chuklaev. So Stanislav Chuklaev. Oops. 
And it's a little bit of a rough start there for Wilhelm Brem. Florian Grimm is Wilhelm's uh, guide. It's not good for the confidence setting off, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to settle into his work. The snow is soft, the tracks are deep, and sometimes it takes no time at all to be brought down to the snow. It's, it's tricky. Shapsky boy. From Belarus, guide Mikhail Ogedzu and Vasily Shapsky boy. Namoral, just four seconds down on the time of Chocolaya through the 500. Yaroslav Oshnetsky. From Kiev. First uh, Olympic Games for him. He's only 21. Brian McKeever. From Canada will be next to go. As we see now, Brian McKeever. Let's have a look to the shooting range. We're at the first athletes now in the shooting range. Atomov, Alexander Atomov. Nikolai Pomohorin, Russian Federation. Get back to Brian McKeever because there's uh, quite a bit to tell about uh, the Canadian. He's a veteran of the sport now. So even there, that uh, Atomov nearly. Lost his balance in this tricky soft snow. Kalukin missed one. Yeah. Yeah. Joining us for the first time, wondering how the athletes with a visual impairment shoot at the range. It's, a, it's an electronic, uh, computerized acoustic rifle system. And the rifle is adjusted to the aim according to the sound frequency the athlete hears through their headset. Dmitry Shulga. And the athletes just being guided into their shooting position. This is Stanislav Choklaev who had such a pop time through the first checkpoint. On goes the headset. Choklaev. See how he adjusts to the changing frequency and Chuck Layev. Yeah, you're able to hear that uh, clearly at home. The, the higher the frequency, the closer they are to the target, so that they know when to squeeze the trigger. And the closer they were to the target, it's recorded uh, registered by the rifle. So actually firing a shot, obviously. Lukyanenko of uh, Ukraine going well. Kovalevsky. So up in the fifth position, Kovalevsky. And five out of five. That will allow him to be not too far behind Lukyanenko. As uh, he leaves the range for the first time, Lukyanenko out in 6.31.7. These are three laps of two and a half kilometres each. Morning, 
Good kill. So as the athlete aims the rifle towards the target, the frequency of the sound increases. Quite a distinctly elevated pitch when the aim's right. And when the trigger's pulled, the device inside the rifle detects the exact position of the rifle. And so we're able to record a, an accurate attempt or otherwise. Utkin. contingent here four out of four and five out of five for Oleg Konomarov crowd likes that and he'll like it but they like him but he's still behind the time of uh, Lukyanenko and the Ukrainian veteran is uh, Set to spoil the Russian party here if he can keep it going. But Panomarev is only uh, 21 years of age. Modin through the three Ks in uh, just 11 seconds down on Lukyanenko. And the young Swede doing a nice job out there. Soft that snow is in the approach area to the range. It is just slushy. There's nothing anyone can do about it. That's the temperature we've got, and the athletes have to do their best with it. Now, Brem. start and a, a fall straight out of the gate. Doing his best to make up for it here. One to knock over and he does. So Wilhelm Brem, veteran of Nagano, Salt Lake, Torino and Vancouver. So this is game's number five for him. Makes him a pretty significant competitor in the field in terms of his experience, longevity in the sport. It's fantastic to watch him compete. Graham 36 seconds down now on Lukyanenko. He can take 10 or 15 seconds off for what happened to him at the start. So after the first shoot, it was Lukyanenko of Ukraine. And his uh, teammate Utkin and Modin of Sweden. So Russia being shut out at the moment. As Nikolai Polutkin, who started uh, first, and Stanislav Chokhlaev haven't been able to uh, really put it to the others yet. Alexander Atimov. Truga missed one. Three out of three for Atimov. Make that five out of five. Got some good young biathletes here. Atimov is uh, only 22. Uh, Atimov, a bronze medalist at uh, the World Championships last year. And as 
This is where it gets confusing with guides and athletes when there's a close race on. Palutkin. The athletes catching up with each other and uh, creates a bit of congestion around the range. Lukyanenko, no penalties, first shoot. Done. What a skill that is. It's a finely tuned uh, ability to interpret uh, and uh, move according to the changing frequency. And uh, look, Yelenko's got that down. Eight and a half seconds inside for Lukin's time, and he's finished at the range, so he's just got to bring it home as hard as he can. So Palukin, much expected of him in this uh, particular race, but he's going to have to ski extremely quickly the last couple of Ks to post a time that uh, Lukianenko can't beat. Uh, Anatoly Kovalevsky, no misses first time out. Behind Lukianenko already, and he keeps the accurate uh, shots coming. Which he does. Kowalewski is away. Ukraine doing well here. Lukyanenko and Kowalewski, one and three. And Utskin. See if he can uh, upset uh, Kalukin, squeeze him off the podium. And we've got a little bit of skiing to do before we'll know the answer to that question. And we've also got uh, Sebastian Moden out there, but Nomarev, no penalties first time. A miss could not afford that. <laughs> uh, that one hurts. That's when you think you've got this, uh, got the range sorted out. A little lapse, and you're out of contention. Doesn't take much. Thomas Clarion of France. six down so the Frenchman not really challenging today and Kevin Burton started 30 seconds behind Clarion Burton from Boulder Colorado we go back instead though to uh, Vasily Shapsky boy one penalty at the first uh, Top at the range. There's one more straight one here. Got it. Chef's your boy. He's not far off it, and he's proven with uh, considering he missed one the first bout. Uh, he's only going to be less than 30 seconds down. I don't know if he can pick that up in two and a half Ks, but. Uh, he might be thereabouts. So he's fourth at the moment and, and skiing well. And days like today when the snow is soft, 
Your waxing technicians have such a big say in your, uh, your progress across the snow. A miss there from Reshnetsky of Ukraine. Could still be a good day for that country, though. Look, Yanenko. Sitting in pole position, if you like. Oh, dear. And that was Modin. I was wondering what happened to him. He, he was well in contention early on. That might have thrown his confidence for a loop. Second shoot for Wilhelm Brem. Ten, but he's not quite quick enough to get away with any misses. He needed 10 out of 10 and he could have forced his way onto the podium, but I think that might spell it for Brem. Palukan, meanwhile, with his guide Andrei Tokarev, comes into the home straight and Tokarev says, Come on, let's bring this home as best you can. Let's post a time here that the others will struggle with. And the crowd is doing its best to get him home quickly, too. And Nikolai Palukin across in 20 minutes, 29.8. First man out, first man home. And with the time to beat. And we set out after him, Stanislav Chokolaev. But that's uh, Lukyanenko. Making his way towards the finish. He's got 30 seconds to come around this last turn and make it to the line, so he should be able to do that. He's got to dig in now, though. The seconds are ticking by. The guy just moves aside. Lukyanenko can make his own way there, but uh, he's going to have a few seconds to spare, and he will take top spot. Lukyanenko by 11 seconds. All right, there's your time to beat. 20. 18.8. 35, but there's plenty of uh, stamina and spring in those legs. Lukyanenko has done an outstanding job today, particularly at the range where he didn't miss. Gets me. Course. Just, uh, looks like he's lost his form a little bit. But Lukyanenko. Could be uh, about to uh, experience uh, Olympic joy. He's had minor placings in cross country. Well, looking at his biathlon of results, he's had two gold medals in Vancouver and uh, one each in Vancouver and Torino and he's in the gold medal position now in the pursuit and the 12 and a half K but he's not had it in this distance he had a, a silver medal in Torino over seven and a half Ks Lukyanenko can he be the one certainly Anatoly Kovalevsky can't get him He's already outside him with uh, the home straight still to be skied and 21.05 gone. Kovalevsky though, 12 years Lukyanenko's junior. And for the moment into third position. Can he stay on the podium? Yuri Utkin. 
This is going to be close. It's can should be able to get in there ahead of Kovalevsky. He's got uh, seven or eight seconds to spare. It comes across the line now. Yep, and he's into third. 55 down on Lukyanenko, but ahead of Kovalevsky. So he grabs a place on the podium, but for how long? Choklaev coming down to the line. He's got, uh, looks like he'll be just outside a podium finish. He won't get there in 21, 14.6. He'll be just outside it. But should just about be good enough for fourth. He is. Choklaev. He's in the uh, B1 higher end of visual impairment uh, categories his uh, time is adjusted he went out second after Palukin might have come in well after Lukyanenko but uh, uh, time factoring adjusts his uh, finishing time total and Chocolayev has had a good race Vasily Shapstia boy And this might be close to a third spot here. Caps here, boy, has got to get there in under 21 14. He's coming up to 21 minutes now. 14 seconds to get there, and I think he will. Caps here, boy, comes across the line in 21.06.6. He's into third now, so <laughs> there's a great deal of shuffling on and off the podium here for this uh, third place. Palukin is still in second. Lukyanenko of Ukraine still in first. But, uh, third spot is continually up for grabs. Shapstia boy has got it at the moment. Getting down to the line now is uh, Sebastian Modin. problems out there including a fall but, uh, uh, keep in mind that Sebastian's only 19 and already it's his second uh, Paralympic Winter Games so he is quite a prospect for Sweden oh, he's got his own little fan club that's fantastic I'm sure we can hear them. Eighteen started, so we're uh, getting towards the back end of the field now. And uh, 41 is uh, Yaroslav Wisniewski. Just right hand turn down past the fans and. They've been so generous to competitors from every nation. We'll try and uh, squeeze into the top ten. Shetsky, it uh, looks like he'll do that. Uh, too many dramas, at least uh, for the moment, until the others follow him in. Stands go a little quiet for a moment while we wait to the next finishes to make their way in. Clouds look a little threatening. The, the longer range forecast is perhaps for some rain. We hope that doesn't happen. Look, Yenenko has got a pretty good grip on top spot now. 20 minutes, 18.8, 11 seconds to the good of uh, Nikolai Polukin. And then uh, Chaps the boy, Vasily Chaps the boy of Belarus. Wilhelm Brem. Brem just had uh, one penalty at the range. 
wonder if these are his last uh, Paralympic Winter Games. He's, uh, he's 40. He's had 30, uh, 46 now. What a most unfortunate start to this race that he fell early. I'm not sure that one of the games he did actually get to Lillehammer in 1994 and had a, had a silver medal there. He's had gold medals in Nagano, Salt Lake and Vancouver. And 7.5K and 12.5K. He's one of the real uh, veterans of the sport. So these are his sixth Paralympic Winter Games. That's wonderful longevity from Wilhelm Brem. Just to say he won't go around again in four years in, in Korea. If he's got the appetite for it. And he's just been reassured by Florian Grimm. Look, you'll have better days. It just it didn't work out for him today. It set back on his heels very early by a fall straight out of the gate. Clarion coming up to the five and a half K checkpoint. I did enjoy hearing the philosophy that Clarion brings to the sport. After losing my sight, I turned to my sporting activities as if I needed them to cope. And over the years, this need was transformed into a pleasure. And it was from this moment I was able to develop myself through competition. So often sport the outlet. Uh, athletes who find themselves with an impairment. Sugar coming down to the line for Ukraine and well outside of a podium position. Mitra Sugar. Almost four minutes behind Lukyanenko. And now looks uh, very assured indeed of uh, the Olympic Championship, the Paralympic Championship. He's been paired 7.5k, and it's nothing too new to Lukyanenko. He's uh, a great success in previous games. Artimov. Alexander Artimov of Russia comes down to the line. Most of these athletes in biathlon are also competing in cross country at uh, these Paralympic Games. This is uh, a look at uh, Lukyanenko. I'm talking about his success at Paralympic Winter Games. Gold medals in Torino and Vancouver. 12 and a half K in Torino. 3K pursuit in Vancouver. And in, um, cross country has had a silver and a bronze. Vancouver and Torino also. by Reed Fletcher, USA athlete. Adikoff from Sun Valley. And he's only young, just uh, 18 years of age. Jacob Adikoff. Put this one down to experience. He's a recipient of a special award in the United States, the Dave Quinn Award, given by the Cross Country Sports Committee for his impressive performances at junior level. And that uh, augurs well for the future for Jacob Adikoff.
Kevin Burton and his guide, Greg Rawlings, making their way down the straight now. Kevin out of Boulder, Colorado. And, uh, and he took up the sport a couple of years ago at the uh, National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic in Snowmass Village, Colorado. Served in the U.S. Navy. And, uh, an Arab linguist for uh, almost 10 years before he was medically retired a couple of years back, Kevin Burton. That's good. We got friends behind us. Very fast, ladies and gentlemen. Right after this competition, we will have four lower uh, Thomas Clarion. Yeah. The work of the guide, you're getting a sense of it there. Not only do they have to do the hard skiing, they have to be talking and little, little loudspeaker pointed in the direction of uh, his athlete. Cross country or biathlon, it's uh, it's interesting. Thomas Clarion from Bonville in France. He was inspired to take up the sport by the French women's biathlon team that won gold in the relay at the 92 Olympic Games in Olympic Games in Albeville. As the sport helps him forget his visual impairment. The adrenaline removes all the fear. I'm totally focused on my technique and, and skiing smoothly. Nothing else matters. And Thomas Clarion. Round into the home straight. And he's been uh, welcomed to the line. In the most generous fashion. It's been the way of this uh, great crowd up at uh, Alara Cross Country and Biathlon Centre. <laughs> Thomas Clarion, five minutes fifty outside Lukyanenko's. Looks to be winning time. <laughs> Impressive how they push themselves, these uh, cross country and biathlon uh, competitors. A hug of uh, congratulations from Julian Bula, his guide. Well done. Karat uh, Kanafin of Kazakhstan. He's from Astana. And the guard is uh, Dmitry Kolomietz. In they come. Be uh, well down on the time of Lukyanenko. It uh, won't matter too much to him right now. It's an achievement to compete and to finish. And before that, just to get here. So well done to Kailat Kanifin of Kazakhstan. turned out to support him and that's wonderful to see we should have the placings in for you the men's seven and a half k and uh, 
against Vitaly Lukyanenko. And holds on to first place from Nikolai, Nikolai Palukin of Russia. And then it's Vasily Shapskyaboy of Belarus. Field of 18. And uh, sadly, we didn't get a finish uh, from Brian McKeever. Uh, the Canadian veteran not able to complete the course. Interesting day of uh, competition in biathlon. Some favourites getting up, some underdogs jumping to the top of the podium. The unpredictability of sport. It's uh, what we love about it. There's no scripts. You can do their best on the day. Fans here have had a great time. And uh, we should have some flower presentations uh, to bring you shortly. King's on his hat. He's been uh, busy collecting for part of the uh, Paralympic and Olympic experience. <laughs> How to dance standing still. That's, that's how you do it. As soon as uh, we can get uh, all the athletes and officials organised, we'll have the flower presentations for you. Uh, events this afternoon here at uh, Laura. It shouldn't be far away.
Ladies and gentlemen, the flower ceremony for the final of women's six kilometers standing. Дамы и господа, цветочные церемонии награждения победителей призеров по биатлону. Шесть километров женщины в классе стоя. Athletes and presenters on their way. Flower ceremony for the women's six kilometer standing in the biathlon. Kaufman, Anna Milenina, and Yulia Batenkova. Yulia Batenkova, well, the, the top spot on the podium just continues to 
elude her. Uh, silver medal in Torino in biathlon. And uh, several silver medals in cross country skiing. She's got a big program, so maybe she can uh, still claim that top spot. But a great race from her in the 6K. Anna Milenina, 27 years of age from uh, Krasnodar. The gold medal was four years ago in the 3K pursuit. And a couple in uh, cross country skiing as well. So she's used to being up here. Uh, there's one happy winner. Husband Mark, daughter Karina will be sharing in uh, this moment for Alina Kaufman. She took a lot of uh, 2010, 2011 away from competition. To have the daughter Karina. Good result uh, for the Russian Federation with uh, Elena Kaufman and Anna Malenina first and second. And from Ukraine, Yulia Otenkova in third spot, women's 6K. for you to come shortly the men's seven and a half k standing biathlon one in sensational uh, circumstances by Vladislav Nikomtsev
Ladies and gentlemen, the floral ceremony for the triathlon men's 7.5 kilometer standing. Дамы и господа, цветочные церемонии награждения победителей и призеров по биатлону 7,5 километров мужчины в классе стоя. Flower ceremony for triathlon, seven and a half kilometer men's standing. One interesting aspect to this presentation is that two out of the three involved here are both under 20 years of age. Komtsev, 19, Karachurin, in third place, just 18 years of age and only just. Azat Karachurin might have hoped to win this event because uh, he had a 250 point lead in the Nordic skiing points for this season. But it's what you do on the day. He did very well. And to claim third place, of course, is a wonderful achievement. Uh, he would have had his sights set, though, I suspect, a little higher. And would have expected perhaps a bit more of himself. However, he looks well satisfied and proud, and he should be. Mark Adams, fourth in those uh, season standings. He's done well to claim second place. The 7.5K uh, World Championship uh, behind him in Sweden last year. So he brings great form to Sochi, and he's delivered with a second place here. Great result for Canada. And Vladislav Lekomtsev. By point seven of a second. Not much more than the blink of an eye. And well, who'd have seen this coming? His standings in the uh, current season, well, he's only 12th, but a look at his cross country results. And we've got a couple of uh, recent world check. Vladislav Lekomtsev. It was a great race, the men's 7.5k standing. Vladislav Lekomtsev of Russia, and Mark Ahrens of Canada, and Azat Karachurin of Russia.